This is Pastor Paul with a podcast. Uh, how great, how precious is our salvation? This is the second thing that I want to consider. I want to co- consider the costliness. Our salvation is great because it cost. It's not that it costs you and me. That's not the that's not the point, the direction that I want to emphasize. I want to look at the costliness of this thing. God is precious. And what he did is like, you can't put a value to it. I want to read out of 1 Peter uh, 18 and 19. It says, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who truly was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We talked last week about the greatness of God, how, how our salvation is great because it starts, started with him. He, he worked it out. He brought it forth. And this week, he paid the price. He paid the cost. This is incredible. I look at this. This is personal to me. I was a sinner. I was lost. I was a thief. A party animal. I lied. I dishonored. I was not. I had no good in me. And looking back, I can see how it, this God kept and he shielded and he ordered steps. He brought me to a place. I'm talking about a love that is awesome. A love that is awesome. It's the same love that was in the heart of the father when he sent forth his son. It was the same love that was in the heart of the son when he said, not my will, but your will be done. Same love. Christ was precious. Christ Jesus lived so that his father would be seen. He didn't come in his own name. He didn't desire glory for himself. He laid down his life day by day. Even though what was in him and the substance that was in him was worthy of honor. It was worthy of kingship. It was greater than any substance that was in the world. Any man that was in the world. This love, this substance rather that was in him. It was greater than everything else that was in this world. It just came to serve. He didn't toot his horn. He spoke concerning the Father. He didn't accept the praise of men. He directed it back to the Father. His life was not hypocrisy. He declared that God should be feared. He feared God. He declared that God should be served with everything. He did that thing. He didn't rush to judgment. He didn't pick up the stones. He said, neither do I 
accuse you. He was zealous. This was not something that was in him as a, as a casual thing. He was zealous for his father. He said that the zeal of my father's house hath consumed me. He took the, 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 the whip that he made and he drove out the, the people that polluted the sanctuary. He didn't treat the prostitute any different. He accepted her gift. He didn't treat men and women really differently. And I'm saying that he didn't have the door open to the men and close to the women. It was open. Whosoever would. Everything about him, all of his ways, pleased the Father. They manifested the nature of the Father. There was no sin in him. To that point, sin was remitted, it was covered by sacrifices of lambs defenseless lambs. You got to think about these things. They would bring the lamb and they would slit the throat. The blood would let out and they would butcher it and put it on the altar. God says, that's not enough. It doesn't bring the resolution. It doesn't bring the change that I need. I'm going to send my son. So he sent his son. And if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, it was the life of a lamb. He was led to his slaughter. His blood was let, and it was not sinful blood. Darkness transgressed against God. Dominion was passed back at the cross. If you look at Psalms 22 and in other places in the Psalms, And Isaiah, you get a feel that this, this Jesus that we call Savior, and we look over his life, his physical life, he prevailed over many things. He prevailed over discouragement, over hopelessness, over pain, over rejection. He prevailed over all of these things and laid his life down in love. This was a faultless thing. My point is this. It was so precious what was done in the person of Jesus Christ. It was so precious that our Father, hallelujah, has highly exalted him above every name that is named in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. He has highly exalted him. Why? Because of the preciousness of the sacrifice that was laid down, it was given. Yes, for you and me, but I'm just talking from the perspective of the Father. It was so precious. If you reject that sacrifice, you reject God himself. If you despise that sacrifice, God will despise us. He doesn't respect the person of man, but he honors who honors that sacrifice. It's costly beyond compare. It's costly beyond understanding. It's costly. It's costly. Our salvation is great. Because it was paid for 
with the obedience, with the humility, with the honor of the Son towards the Father. It was paid for by the letting of his blood. Did he do that without pain or without struggle? He did not. I have been in places of great duress. I have never prayed so intensely that my sweat was blood. I'd never been there. I'm telling you, our Father, our Heavenly Father, honors this sacrifice and considers it a sacrifice beyond compare. Absolutely, hallelujah, beyond compare. Even though we too would bear a cross and, 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 and suffer that we may enter in, that's not the main thing. It's entering into the fellowship of the, of the sufferings of Christ. But I'm telling you, the foundation was laid in this spotless lamb that was slain. I love this. To consider this, to me, is to begin to put on the fear of the Lord even concerning our salvation. Can't deal with this thing like it's cheap. Like anybody can come in and do anything they want and everything is good. Our Father considers this sacrifice the most costly thing that he's ever seen, that he's ever done. He values this above all things. He's looking for people that value this really above all things. That's what he's talking about. No man can come after me, can be my disciple. No man can come after me, except he hate father, sister, mother, brother, wife, yea, and his own life also. Love less. Unless the cross, unless the sacrifice, unless their Savior is in the number one spot. Costly. I refer you back to the scripture in Hebrews 2, 3. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? This is something that the Father of glory has put a price tag on it. It doesn't matter if men like it or don't like it. He put a price tag on it. It is costly. It is precious. Hallelujah. Two considerations that we've looked at. Our salvation is great because it started with God. He doesn't do anything. Little shallow, cheap. It's great because it's costly. The perfect sacrifice was laid down. The blood of a righteous man, yes. Of a holy man, yes. Of the one and only Son of God. It was let. It was let for you and me. It was poured out. It's costly. Is so costly. Our Father sees it as costly. I'd like to look at the next. Is our salvation is great because of its scope. I'll leave it here though. Be blessed, be strengthened, be encouraged. Let's consider in a different way, in a greater way, our salvation. 